Undoubtedly, we know that porn, for better or for worse, is affecting our behavior in the bedroom. And porn is a controversial subject when it comes to this. But really, let's dissect this. Is it the porn itself? Is it masturbation frequency? Or is it problematic porn consumption? Porn consumption is a growing part of our society. With the internet came access to visually sexually explicit imagery at the tap of our keyboard or phones. And in fact, about 70% of adult men in the United States view porn in any given year, and that's almost 40% of adult women. Undoubtedly, we know that porn, for better or for worse, is affecting our behavior in the bedroom. And porn is a controversial subject when it comes to this. I could literally dedicate an entire YouTube channel about porn and sex, but I'm not, okay? I want to instead in this video specifically focus on porn and erections to evaluate if there is evidence that porn use affects erectile function in penis owners. So some sex experts do believe that porn can cause erectile dysfunction, the inability to achieve or maintain an erection and especially during partnered sex, especially in men under 40. Support of this idea of porn-induced erectile dysfunction comes from studies like this. This study found that among men 20 to 40 years of age, erectile dysfunction was increased significantly when pornography was preferred over partnered sex. Interestingly, this same study included women and found that porn use in women was however not associated with any female sexual dysfunction. So porn use in men, mm, bad porn use in women, didn't matter. But really, let's dissect this. Is it the porn itself? Is it masturbation frequency? Or is it problematic porn consumption? To help answer this, let's turn to a survey of over 3,400 men, mostly in Belgium and Denmark, where the researchers looked at validated erectile function scores using the well-known IIEF5, which is a questionnaire that looks like this, that basically assesses the presence and severity of erectile dysfunction. With the IIEF5, it's a five question questionnaire that scores from five to 25. And the higher the score, the better your erectile function. And those who don't have any erectile dysfunction score between 22 to 25, where those with the most severe erectile dysfunction will have a low score between five and seven. So these participants were also given another questionnaire called a Cyber Pornography Addiction Test or CYPAT to evaluate the presence and severity of problematic porn consumption. The CYPAT looks like this, and the higher the score, the higher the level of problematic porn consumption. So higher scores here, not so good. The researchers also asked the participants several other questions, including questions about frequency of masturbation overall, age at first porn use, questions about their arousal, their libido, the drug use during intercourse or sexual activity, any antidepressant use, and a host of other questions. So what they found was that even when controlling for other variables like libido, masturbation frequency, relationship status, use of antidepressants, performance pressure. Erectile dysfunction was associated with those who rated higher on the porn addiction questionnaire, meaning the higher the CYPAT score, a surrogate for problematic porn consumption, the higher the chance of having erectile dysfunction. For instance, Almost half of the men who had a CYPAT score above 28 had some degree of erectile dysfunction. And they calculated that for each one point increase on this CYPAT score, the odds of having erectile dysfunction increased by 6%. They also found that early exposure to porn was associated with erectile dysfunction. Of the participants who had started masturbating to porn at a very, very early age, under 10 years, 58% of them had some degree of erectile dysfunction. Compare that to men who didn't start using porn to masturbate until the age of 18 and older, only 24% of them had some degree of erectile dysfunction. 
and men who consumed more than 30 minutes of porn in one sitting had a slightly higher chance of erectile dysfunction. Very interestingly, they found when it came to just masturbation frequency itself, there was no correlation between masturbation frequency and erectile dysfunction. So masturbation frequency itself had no bearing or risk for erectile dysfunction. It was problematic porn consumption. Similarly, in a 2021 study in the Journal of Sexual Medicine that looked at over 900 heterosexual men aged 18 to 44, these men completed anonymous online surveys. Porn use alone was not associated with erectile dysfunction. And in fact, in this study, even porn duration, meaning the length of time watching porn in a single episode, didn't matter. It did not increase the risk of erectile dysfunction. Neither did frequency of porn use mattered. But what did matter was self-perceived porn addiction. So self-perceived porn addiction was associated with a small increased risk of erectile dysfunction and decreased sexual satisfaction by the individual. So what does all this mean? What is the final verdict? So far, research has not proven or shown a direct causal relationship with porn and erectile dysfunction. And Porn-induced erectile dysfunction is not a recognized term by any medical society to date. However, it appears that problematic porn consumption, porn addiction, negative feelings towards porn, and even porn at a very early age may increase the risk of erectile dysfunction by increasing feelings of shame and guilt around partnered sex. Problematic porn consumption may also create unrealistic and unhealthy expectations around real life partner sex, real everyday sex, and create sexual dissatisfaction that affects one's ability to get sufficiently aroused. Remember y'all, erections start in the mind. Arousal starts here. So if you are having trouble getting or keeping an erection and you feel that your porn usage may be problematic or contributing to your issue, it is a fabulous idea to find a sex therapist and a urologist who can help you. And the combination of psychotherapy and medical therapy can be huge in many individuals. So as the effects of porn continue to be studied and evaluated, we will be able to further understand the potential risks and the potential benefits that erotica and porn may have on our sexual behavior and sexual function. Let me know what you think. I'm really curious to see these comments, y'all. <laughs> Let me know. Usually the subject matter stirs up a lot of strong emotion on both sides. And I understand varying points of view and perspectives on this. So drop that comment below, like this video, subscribe, and join me every week for all things down there right here. Mm -hmm.